Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today I wanna to talk about Lightroom's new AI noise reduction feature. Let's talk about it. First of all, quick disclaimer, this video is gonna focus on the cloud version of Lightroom. If you use Lightroom Classic, check out down in the description, I have a video for you too. So without belaboring it too long, let me show you what this can do. I'm gonna go ahead and take this photo, which was shot at a very high ISO. In fact, it was up at ISO 6400. And if we zoom in on it, we can see there is a ton of noise in this image. So previously we had our basic noise reduction sliders in Lightroom. Now those have been replaced by their new AI tool. Now there's a few different ways you can proc this tool. Uh, my favorite is in the grid view to right click on the image and go to enhance. Now, you also can apply this in bulk. So if you have a bunch of images, you wanna noise reduce all of them, select multiple, right click enhance, and it'll take you into this feature. Now, once you're in the enhance view, there's a couple things I like to do first. In the preview window on the left, in the lower right hand section of that, there is a little minus magnifying glass. I always like to click that and zoom in over a part of the photo with a lot of noise. Generally, that's gonna be an area of the background or an area where the subject meets the background so I can see both the details and some blurry areas where I want more noise reduction to be applied. The way this preview window works is, as soon as it renders, you're gonna have an after view inside of the preview window. If you wanna see the before, you can click and hold. That'll show you the noisy before view. And then as soon as you release, it'll go back to the noise reduced version. The next thing we need to talk about is amount. And I really like the way that Adobe has done this amount slider. In previous versions of Lightroom, if we wanted to have a higher ISO and we needed more noise reduction, we would have to increase the amount slider higher. In this case, 50% is kind of like Adobe's recommended setting at whatever ISO you happened to shoot at. And then you can kind of season to taste with a little bit less or a little bit more noise reduction. In my opinion, the 50% is pretty perfect for pretty much every photograph. So unless you have a very high noise tolerance or a very low noise tolerance, I don't think you're gonna need to change this. One other thing I do wanna point out at this point is that super resolution is unchecked when denoise is checked. Those two tools are mutually exclusive. So there's no way to get noise reduction and the 4X resolution increase of the super resolution tool. Lastly, down at the bottom, we have an estimated time remaining. This is obviously heavily dependent on your computer's hardware speed as well as the megapixels of your camera. For me, with about a 20 megapixel camera and a moderately new laptop, I'm about one to two minutes per photo. From there, let's go ahead and hit enhance and let this run. So what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna start a background task. We can see it running up here in the upper left, generating enhanced DNG. And when it's complete, it's gonna take the enhanced version and the original version and stack them together into a little stack, group them up. And we'll know that's done when our photo that we just denoised gets a little two in the upper right hand corner. Now what's really cool if we click that two, it's gonna open up our stack down here in the film strip, and then we can double click either version to do a little comparison. Now if I zoom in here, this is the after version, and I'm actually gonna zoom in even more. I'm gonna go up to say 200%, maybe even 300%, so we can really see what's going on here. Let me hide this information window, and here we are. So. Previously to this, noise reduction was basically blur. It blurred your image. So the more noise reduction you applied, yes, it was getting rid of noise, but it was doing so kind of destructively, losing some of the original information in the photo. The new AI version, yes, still blurs, but it also tries to identify what the different objects in the photo are, and it selectively blurs. It's able to see, oh, that's the, the singer's hair. I shouldn't blur that detail, but that's the background. I should blur that detail. And if we check out the before after, let me click back and forth. Here is the original noisy version. And here's the noise reduced. Noisy, noise reduced. Now the things that really stick out to me, let me zoom in even more so we can really see this. I'm going to go into 400% are the little bits of hair on the right side of the singer's face here. As I switch back to the noise reduced version, it has actually rebuilt detail that wasn't there, at least wasn't discernible in the noisy photo. Again, here's that before and here's that after. And this is amazing. Um, I can flat out say kind of the TLDR of this whole, um, whole video is this is the best noise reduction I've ever used. Previously to this, I've been using the Topaz Denoise AI plugin uh, for um, Adobe software. And Topaz is a great company. They had great noise reduction software. 
I did some side-by-side -side comparisons and I, I won't belabor this too long with that, but this handily beats it in pretty much every situation. The really only downsides to the Adobe tool are really a couple things. Number one is it's only available on raw photos. So if you shoot JPEG or JPEGs or TIFFs are part of your normal workflow, you can only use this on a raw photo. Now, I know they are probably working on a version that will work on JPEGs and TIFFs, but as of now, raw only. Secondly, when compared to Topaz, it is a little bit slower. However, when you build in the time needed to export the photo out into Topaz and then save it back into Lightroom, it's probably pretty comparable in timing. Finally, the only other kind of downside, I guess you could say, or, or limitation of this, uh, this new feature is that it can only be applied one time per photo, and it's mutually exclusive to the super resolution tool like I already discussed. So if that's part of your main workflow and you're someone who likes to make really big prints and needs the 4X resolution, you might run into limitations where you can't use both on the same photograph. But other than that, it's a pretty amazing tool and I'm so glad Adobe finally put some effort into those noise reduction options because they were getting really antiquated. I do wanna show you all a couple other examples here just for, um, for the doing of it. So here's an image of a mountain lion that I shot a number of years ago. And if we look at the comparison here, here is our original photo. And you can see this was early morning, so it was shot at about, I think ISO 800 or 1600 with a fairly old camera. And you'll notice that all of the fur is just fuzzy. It has that noisy fuzziness, specifically the eyelashes, right? They're not super clear. Well, when we noise reduce, it fixes the noise, but it also rebuilds that texture. The eyelashes become clearer. And previous noise reduction tools, the, the options in Adobe, would have basically just obliterated everything. It would have blurred the eyelashes, it would have blurred the fur. Uh, the noise would have been gone, but it also would have been a blurry photograph. Another example of that is this one. This was shot with an old Canon 5D Mark II. Um, and it's an infrared photo, so it was very high ISO because um, it was not a converted camera. And again, if we look at the before after here, you guys can see these grasses, they look very grass-like, they look normal. Well, in the original photo, they were incredibly noisy. We had so much noise overwhelming the photo and we weren't able to see any of those details. As soon as, soon as we switch over, it actually finds those pieces of grass and it rebuilds them. And the same is true if I go up to say this tree up here, right? See this tree with all the texture and detail? Let me zoom in even further to 300% so we can really see it. Here was what it had to work with, right? A noisy mess and it's able to figure out what was actually there and rebuild the information. So overall, I have been incredibly impressed with these tools. There are some limitations right now, but for most photographers, this is an amazing new tool to have in the arsenal. This is also super exciting for me and other astrophotographers because previously we haven't had access to this level of noise reduction from within an Adobe product, which is pretty cool. Um, with Astro, you can generally do a lot of noise reduction uh, because a lot of the things we're photographing don't have a lot of hard edged detail, right? They're stars and clouds of gas and things like that. So I'm excited to see where that will go as well. The only other thing I will say is that this update did launch with a couple other new features. Uh, we now have curves adjustment that can be applied locally, which is pretty cool. Um, that's part of the masking tool now. And there's also some new integrated features as far as working with Lightroom into Photoshop and then back to Lightroom. If you are interested in those other features, I have linked the patch notes down below. So definitely check those out. But the big exciting thing was definitely this denoise feature. All right, everyone, if you got some good value out of this video, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date for future videos. We make videos every week on photography, videography, anything kind of creative, and we'd love to have you along. Thanks everyone.